Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com. I want to shoot a real quick video for you guys today, sharing a little bit about how I choose my VFR altitudes. And the very first thing I look at is which direction am I heading? Now, keep in mind, this is all based, guys, on magnetic course, all right? Uh, so if I'm flying out to the west or from a 180 to a 359 heading, I'm going to fly my even altitudes plus 500. Uh, whereas if I'm heading out to the east, I can fly my odd plus 500. And that goes from 179 up to zero. A very common question I get asked is, well, what if I'm flying right on 360, right on 180? Well, you can see how it's inclusive to each heading as well through this picture. Great way I remember this. Um, you know, some people like to say odd people live in the East. Now, as someone who lives in the East, I take offense to that, but you know what? It helps us remember that odd people live in the East. So that's how we can work to remember that. So now I figured out, okay, we're heading, uh, let's say we're heading from central Florida where I'm based at in Ocala. Uh, we're heading up to the Jacksonville, um, area, so sort of Northeast uh, Florida. So uh, we're heading out to the east. We're going to fly an odd plus 500 feet altitude. The next thing I look at is I want to look at weather. So literally just pulled these METARs now for the Ocala airport. Uh, taking a look at everything. One, uh, winds 170 at 4, 10 statute miles visibility. And then here's where it gets interesting. Few clouds at 4,200 feet. Well, that's nothing major. And in fact, uh, remembering that odd people live in the east, I'm heading generally east. So I could fly at 3,500 feet. Does that make sense? The the odd part is the three, the 3,000, and then I add 500 to it. Does that make sense? All right, so um, so far so good, but let's look at the TAF for an airport just north of us, the Gainesville Airport. So we're kind of reading through this TAF here. Uh, everything's looking good, greater than six, until we kind of get to some showers in the vicinity, and they're showing scattered at 3,000. In fact, later on down the road at 1,800 Zulu, they're going as far to that scattered layer is now becoming a broken layer. Uh, at 3,500 feet. So now I'm kind of thinking, I'm looking at when I want to fly and I'm thinking, geez, am I really going to be able to do this flight at 35, you know, 100 feet like I planned? Because I do have my VFR cloud clearance and visibility requirements. I've got my visibility, but can I stay 500 feet below those clouds and still maintain my VFR cruising altitudes? Well, in this case, the answer is no. And honestly, that would weigh very heavily into making a go or no go decision. Altitude is my friend in all situations. Now, on top of seeing light showers and rain and showers in the vicinity, that would also help me make a no go decision. But today may not be the best day for uh, us to go flying up to Jacksonville, just kind of based on we can't even get the altitude we want. I certainly don't want to be doing this goofing around at 2,000 feet, you know, on a cross country. You know, if something were to happen, uh, you know, I want as much altitude as possible. Um, and really, the last thing I check after I I've checked which direction I'm heading after I check the weather um, I like to look at airspace am I going to be approaching any class C D and B airspace um, that I need to get up and over um, or I'm going to have to be on flight following to get cleared through so I just kind of a heads up not that I need to go around any airspace uh, you know, per se, I can always talk to these people. Uh, but in the event I have to, I have to have a backup plan. Any restricted airspace, I would go down to the bottom of my VFR sectional chart, see who controls that airspace, see when it's active, what altitudes it's up, active up to, and base my decision on that. I make some calls to figure out whether that's going to be hot or cold today. And lastly, because uh, because we check our notams for each and every flight, you know, check and see if there's any TFRs in the area. You know, a lot of times TFRs have a altitude ceiling as well that you could effectively fly over them and not worry about it. Uh, you may find a TFR that you know extends up to 18,000 feet though so you've got to be you know willing to look this stuff up and negotiate the airspace restricted airspace you know TFRs that we're dealing with. Um, lastly guys too don't ever assume just because you're doing the right thing doesn't mean everyone else is. Just because you're flying to the, you know, the east, and we know odd people live in the east, so you're flying at an odd plus 500 feet altitude, doesn't mean you can keep your head down and not worry about other traffic. Just because you're doing the right thing doesn't mean everybody else is as well. It's great you're doing the right thing, 
But, you know, just like driving, you don't worry about yourself driving, you worry about the other crazy people on the road usually. A aviation, unfortunately, is no different. So don't ever assume. Guys, if you have a question about uh, VFR cruise and altitudes, go ahead and leave me a comment below this video. If you leave that comment on m0a.com, uh, you know you'll get a reply from me. Um, so with that, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya. Hey there, if you think this video was good, you're gonna love the over 400 other videos inside our exclusive members only online ground school. Ground School Academy members enjoy weekly live webinars, mock check rides, and customized written test prep. Ground School Academy members not only have access to the number one rated online ground school, but also the best guarantee in the industry. Pass your check ride or we'll pay for it. Visit groundschoolacademy.com to learn more and become an online ground school member today.